The Linux Show, starring Nick Carter, Master Detective, presented by Acme, America's great producer of fine quality paints. This is the story of a man known the world over as one of the most daring and resourceful characters in the history of detective fiction. A man whose name has become a symbol of the triumph of right and justice over the sinister forces of crime and lawlessness. A man recognized as one of the great masters of deduction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Today's exciting case, The Man Who Lived Too Long. Another exciting chapter dramatized from the life story of Nick Carter. In just a moment, we'll hear how Nick Carter investigated the strange mystery of a dead man who lived eight days in a week. When you keep up with the times, you not only know what's new, but lots of times you find new ways to help yourself. Take, for example, the modern way to save household drudgery. The three great Linux home brighteners. Linux clear gloss, Linux cream polish, and Linux self-polishing wax. Those efficient new shortcuts to the care of woodwork, furniture, and floors. Linux clear gloss, which is brushed on, brings lustrous, longer-lasting protection to every wood and linoleum surface in your home. Linux cream polish, which cleans as it polishes, renews the sleek, gleaming beauty of your fine furniture. And Linux self-polishing wax, the amazing new wax finish, lends rich, satiny loveliness to all your floors, wood, linoleum, or tile. What's more, all three great Linux home brighteners do the job in record time. So start now to enjoy leisure. Ask your hardware, paint, or department store for the three great Linux home brighteners, the modern shortcuts to new home beauty. And now for today's exciting case from the life of Nick Carter. It's quiet in the old Victorian mansion on the corner of 5th and 4th. Nick Carter is working on some intricate aniline dye tests. Patsy is transcribing notes. A long, calm afternoon of intensive work is ahead. Suddenly, the telephone rings. Nick Carter's office. Patsy, is Nick there? Oh, hello, Lieutenant Riley. Say, you sound excited. Anything wrong? Plenty's wrong. Let me talk to Nick. Uh, hold it a second. Well, what's bothering Riley today, Patsy? He won't tell me. Here. Thanks. Hello, Riley. What's on your mind? You've got to hustle down to my office at once. Why? I got a case that'll blow the top off the city if it breaks. It's got to be checked. Well, what's behind it? Ever hear of world research? Well, who hasn't, Riley? They're the biggest industrial chemists and research labs in the country. Well, there's a guy down here named Baker. He's accusing them of murder. Who's murder? You'll find out when you get here. Come on. Who's murder, Riley? His own murder. This guy Baker here is claiming he's dead already. <laughs> Nick, this here is Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker, Nick Carter. I want him to hear your story. Go ahead, Mr. Baker. How has World Research murdered you already? As I stand before you now, Mr. Carter, I'm a dead man. Should be buried in a very few days. Go on. I'm an inventor, Mr. Carter. Not by profession, but by hobby. During the day, I'm a broker. Evenings, I work in my laboratory. I've been doing research with a friend of mine named John Dre. You can check that. Get on with your story, man. I want you to check it to prove I'm not crazy. Well, Dre and I have perfected a new radio development that'll revolutionize the industry. It's been patented. You can check that, too. We'll decide what to check, Mr. Baker. Go ahead. World Research has been after us for weeks to sell out to them. We refused. Apparently, they were desperate. Today, I found this piece of apparatus connected inside one of my experimental machines. A look at it. Oh, what a mess of wires and tubes that is. It was brought into my laboratory by World Research. It's a gamma ray projector of tremendous power. All the while my experimental radio has been operating, this little horror has been projecting gamma rays until my body is saturated with them. I can't live, gentlemen. World research has murdered me. What do you want us to do? Check my story from beginning to end. Then let me come down here and begin action against world research. If I'm going to die, Mr. Carter, I, I want my revenge before I'm in the grave. Look, Mr. Baker, you're talking like an idiot now. Easy, How Riley, we... easy. Mr. Baker, Lieutenant Riley and I'll give this case our most careful attention. You ask for vengeance. I promise you this, you will get it, if you deserve it. Well, Nick? 
I'm finished, Patsy. Is this apparatus Baker brought in really deadly? No. You mean he lied? I'm not sure. All I do know is that this so-called gamma ray projector is just a mess of tubes and wires. It doesn't make sense. Then the whole case doesn't make sense. And why did Baker come in with that tall story? Yes. Possible world research may be trying to buy him out. But why claim murder? Such an odd, impossible murder. Maybe he's wacky, Nick. I hear most inventors are. Maybe. Well, there's one way to find out. Get the car, Patsy. We're going to visit Mr. Baker in his laboratory. I'm out of breath. How much higher? One flight. The janitor said Baker's lab's on the top floor. I hope I can make it. Now take my arm. Oh, Nick. Are you sure Baker's in? Yes, the janitor said so. Well, then maybe he... Hold it. Here we are. Sounds pretty quiet in there. Maybe he went out. Maybe. Wait a minute. Door's open. Well, let's go in. Gosh, what a mess this place is. I thought all labs were neat, like yours, Nick. Not all. Only the really efficient ones. Doesn't seem to be anybody here. Can't understand it. Lights on, door unlocked. Nick! What is it, Betsy? Behind that table on the floor. Look. Uh Uh-oh. Baker, all right? He's... He's dead, isn't he? Yes. Then he was right about those gamma rays and things. No, Patsy. This time, no one bothered with science. Someone simply brought a revolver, aimed it at Mr. Baker, and shot him to death. I got over here as fast as I could, Nick. If this ain't the screwiest case I ever came across... You can look the body over, Riley. Uh, I've already made a preliminary inspection. He was shot at close range with a 25 caliber gun. Colt automatic. One of those lady-sized pocketbook automatics, eh? Yes. How come you're so sure, Nick? Because I found the ejected shell right here. Oh. See? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, what is it, Nick? Well, something I hadn't noticed before. Look there, under the body. You can just see the edge of the handle. Glory be, it's the gun itself. Watch out for prints on it. Oh, Nick, I know better than that. Uh, right as usual, Mr. Carter, it's a 25 automatic. Let's have a look at it, Riley. Nick, uh, maybe Mr. Baker shot himself. Maybe he was so desperate about those gamma rays and stuff. Patsy, he... he didn't commit suicide. He was murdered. How come you're so sure, Nick? Patsy could be right, you know. Look the gun over by reflected light. Not a print on it. How could a man kill himself and then wipe his prints off the gun? Mm. Obviously, someone held this gun with a handkerchief or glove, killed Baker, dropped the gun, and left. But who, Nick? It's question number one. I'd also like to know how valuable his invention really is and who profits by his death. Where are you going to start to get the answers? We'll try John Dre, Baker's partner, first. Maybe Mr. Dre's an authority on murder. It's true, Mr. Carter. Our radio development is potentially worth a fortune. It's new and tremendously important. Look over the patent yourself. We uh, registered it jointly. Mr. Dre, if you were partners, how is it you and Baker worked in separate labs? Research was only a hobby with Baker. He had a regular brokerage business outside. He wanted a place where he could work now and then, three, four hours a day. Exactly how much did World Research offer you to sell out? Quarter of a million. And you refused, Mr. Dre? Uh, not exactly. We made a counteroffer. And now that Baker's dead and the patent's all yours, you're waiting for the answer, huh? Uh, certainly not. I told you we registered the patent jointly. I can't touch Baker's share. Can you tell me who does inherit Baker's share? His sister, I believe, Julia Baker. She lives with him over at the... I know the address. Thanks a lot, Mr. Dre. Oh, uh, by the way... Eh? Would it be possible to develop an electrical gamma ray projector? What? Nonsense. I, I thought you were a scientist, Mr. Carter. You know gamma rays can only be produced by radioactive elements? Yes, I know it. I'm just wondering if Baker knew I'd know it. Come on, Patsy. Let's pay a visit to Baker's heir. <laughs> I 
suppose it's true I inherit Ben's share in the invention, Mr. Carter. I, I never thought about it much. Miss Baker, tell me, do you know if there's a copy of the patent here? I don't know. I think it's with Ben's attorney. That's Roland York at Maiden Lane. Was your brother working on it very long? For years, it seems. I don't know where he found the time. I hardly ever saw him outside of Sundays. He spent Sunday with me. He worked very hard at the brokerage, ten hours a day. What did he do? He was the statistical expert. No time off? Hardly any. Must have been pretty lonesome here for you. It was. Even at night when he came home from work, he couldn't spend much time with me. He was so tired, he'd just have dinner and then go to bed. What were his hours at the brokerage office, Miss Barr? He worked from nine in the morning and till nine at night, usually. Pretty stiff hours. And what time did you have dinner at home? Around 9.30. And then your brother went to bed? Yes, around 11. Mm, I see. I... I can't understand who'd want to murder my brother, Mr. Carter. He was a good man, was friendly, was interested in everybody. He... Oh, for heaven's sakes, Mr. Carter, who killed him? I don't know yet, Miss Baker. Frankly, at the moment, I'm much more interested in another problem. Oh, I... I don't understand, Mr. Carter. Come along, Patsy. I want to have a talk with the janitor of the building where Baker's lab is located. Nick, does this fantastic problem that's bothering you have anything to do with Baker's murder? Maybe the crux of the murder... You mean the answer to why Baker lied about that gamma ray projector? No. Well, then I don't Wait get it. Here's the building. All right. Come on. Okay. Here's the janitor's door. Yes? You remember me? Nick Carter? Working on the Baker case. Oh, sure. Come on in, Mr. Carter. It's awful hot here out on the sidewalk. No, I've only come to ask you one question. Oh, here, go ahead. When did Mr. Baker usually work in his laboratory? Why, every day. You're sure? Aye, sure. He worked here every day, Monday through Saturday. He come morning sometimes, sometime afternoon, sometimes evenings. But I see him come in here every day except Sunday. He always make it a point to say hello to me when he comes in or goes out. How long did he usually work? In four-hour stretches. That's what I was afraid of. Four hours a day, six days a week. It makes 24 hours, one whole day. Where in blazes did he get that extra day? Nick, what on earth are you talking about? Don't you see, Patsy? Ben Baker... Duck, Patsy. Somebody shot at us from across the street. I saw the flashes. Oh, oh, Nick, the janitor. He's been shot. Help me get him inside, Patsy. Quick. All right. Is he hurt badly? Patsy, this man is dead. What is this mysterious question that's bewildering Nick? Why was the janitor in Ben Baker's lab building murdered? We'll see in just a moment. All of us learn best by doing. That's why American homemakers who have used Linex self-polishing wax have learned so quickly how different, how perfect a quick-drying wax can be. For one practical test is all you need to prove to yourself that this new wax preparation is the key to perfect floor care for wood and linoleum alike. The formula for Linex self-polishing wax developed by leading research chemists, is completely new, giving new beauty, new protection, new skid resistance to all your floors. And Linex self-polishing wax contains the greatest possible amount of genuine carnauba wax for that handsome, satiny look only real wax can give. What's more, the underwriter's laboratories have proved by test that any linoleum, hardwood, or rubber tile floor is actually less slippery after Linex self-polishing wax has been applied as you'll prove for yourself the moment you step on it. And, of course, Linex self-polishing wax takes only a jiffy to use, for you simply wipe it on without tiresome rubbing, and it dries quickly to a beautiful luster that's a joy to behold. So choose genuine Linex self-polishing wax, the finest product of its kind. Ask your dealer now for all three great Linex home brighteners to give your home new beauty the easy way. (laughs) 
And now, back to our story. The strange murder of Ben Baker, broker and amateur inventor, has faced Nick Carter with many peculiar problems. Why did Baker lie about his impending death? How important was his invention? Who would profit by his death? As Nick uncovers an even more fantastic problem, Baker's janitor is shot to death. Now we find Nick, Patsy, and Lieutenant Riley at the scene of the second murder. Nick, I'm really lost. I can't make head or tail of this mess. Can't you give us any idea of what's going on, Nick? Why was Baker's janitor killed? Probably because he knew some vital clue to the identity of the murderer. Nick, what's this big question you say is bothering you? Riley, how can a man live eight days in one week? Oh, now, that's silly, Nick. There's only seven days in anybody's week. Well, nevertheless, Ben Baker lived eight days in a week. I don't understand, Nick. Well, listen. He worked 12 hours a day in the brokerage house, including an hour off for lunch. Uh-huh. He left his house at 8 in the morning for work. He returned at 9.45 or so for dinner. After dinner, he went to bed. I've checked all those times. And they're all verified. Which accounts for 24 hours. But according to the janitor's testimony, he worked at least four hours a day, six days a week in his lab. Mm. That's an extra 24 hours. An extra day. Now, where did Baker get that eighth day in his week? Gosh, it don't make sense. You're telling me. Nick, what in the jumping blue blazes is going on around here? A guy comes around and says he's been murdered, and he ain't. When you check his story, you find all of a sudden he is. Then the killer knocks off a janitor after he's already given his evidence. And then we find the only one who profits by Baker's death is his sister, who's a frightened girl who looks as though she wouldn't hurt a fly. Wait a minute. Baker was knocked off with a 25 automatic. It's a woman's gun. But Baker accused World Research. What have we got to do about it? Get a search warrant, Riley. Huh? Meet us down at the office of Baker's attorney, Roland York. I want to get a look at that patent. <laughs> been all through the files, and here's everything there is on that invention. Gosh, what a mess of documents. Mm. Looks as though it's as much trouble patenting an invention as it is making one. Yes. Mm. Well, Nick, anything phony about this stuff? Strangely enough, no. Mm. Apparently, Baker and Dre have worked out quite a brilliant improvement on radio television transmission. It's not epoch making, but it's sort of thing that can cut costs of transmission 50%. Hmm. Patent seems to be legitimate. Made out by Baker and Dre jointly. That's what Dre said. Here's something. Hmm? Baker's share goes to his sister when he dies. That's what she said. Ah, but here's something no one mentioned. Mm, what's that? If Baker and Dre both die before commercial exploitation of the idea begins... Roland York, the attorney, acquires all commercial rights subject to the obligation to pay both heirs their fair share. Nick. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Patsy? I know what you're both thinking. That maybe John Dre is the next man scheduled to die. That may be true, so let's get busy. All right. What do we do? We're up against a shrewd killer, and we don't know exactly what he's after. Although I have a hunch, if we knew where Ben Baker got his extra day, we'd be a lot closer to the solution. Mm. Riley, get hold of Roland York. Yeah? Hold him for questioning. As tactfully as you can. Right, Nick. Patsy, you and I are going places. Where, Nick? To John Dre's laboratory. To protect him? Maybe. Also, maybe, to find Ben Baker's extra day. There's Dre's place up ahead, Patsy. Last door. The light's on, Nick. Gosh, maybe Dre's been killed already. You're remembering the way we found Baker, huh? All right, let's go in. Oh, who's that? Oh, sorry, Mr. Dre, you startled me. But we are... Quiet, Patsy. Who are you? Oh, let me introduce myself, Mr. Dre. My name is Kent. I'm from World Research. What are you doing here? Why, I... Well, I was sent over to express our deep sympathy for your recent bereavement. So? And also, you understand how embarrassing it is to talk business at such a time. Go on. Well, and also to say that your counterproposal is really much too high. You think so, huh? You must reconsider, Mr. Dre. Now that Baker is dead, huh? I... 
I don't understand. Baker was the one who was holding out for the high price, wasn't he? Well, Mr. Dre. Now that Baker's out of the way, you brazenly come here hoping you can persuade me to accept a smaller figure. I assure you. Nick. Yes, Betsy. I just realized maybe it isn't Roland Jork. Maybe Baker told the truth about world research. Maybe the patent does threaten their business. Why, maybe they. Did I hear you call this man Nick? Well, I. I had assumed I was speaking to Mr. John Dre. Do you mean to tell me that I. What's the meaning of this? What are you people doing in my lab? Investigating murder, Mr. Dre. So I was right. You are an imposter. This is outrageous. How Mr. dare you? Mr. Carter, will you have the goodness to explain what's going on here? Oh, it's really quite simple, Mr. Dre. We came here to throw a little light on the murder mystery. That's and what... Yes, Nick? Say that again. Say what? Really, Carter, this is ridiculous. Quiet, please. I have... Repeat what you said, Patsy. Well, I said we came to Mr. Dre's laboratory to throw a little light on the murder. That's it, light. Light in the laboratory. And that's the explanation. The explanation of what? Ben Baker's extra day. I think I know where he got it. Come on. Where to? Let's go have a look at Baker's electric meter. What's an electric meter got to do with an extra day? It'll show where it went. Here, through this door. Down to the cellar. Watch your step. Pretty dark. I've got a flash. Gosh, cellars in these old loft buildings are creepy. Like catacombs. Yes. It's so deep, these stairs go down forever. We won't be long. Flash your light around, will you, Nick? Afraid? Uh, only of mice. Careful, here's the bottom. Don't trip. The All floor's right. pretty broken up. Now, where are the meters? Well, there they are, Nick. Over there against the far wall, behind that pile of barrels. All right, come on. Who's the killer, Nick? Do you know? Not for sure yet. But I've got a pretty good idea. Maybe Julia Baker isn't as weak and helpless as she seems. Maybe. Maybe I was right about world research. Maybe. Maybe Roland Jork got ambitious. Maybe. Can't you say anything but maybe? Uh, here's the meters. Let's see. First, second. Oh, there. Top floor offices. Baker's was 6R. There it is, on the right. Yes, and there, I hope, is the solution to the case. Where? On the dials. Read off the kilowatt hours. But why, Nick? Because when we compare the meter reading now with the reading a month ago, we'll find that very little electricity has been used. Nick, I can't follow you. What is that? Now, Nick! Patsy, behind these barrels. It's the killer. Nick, we're trapped. No, no, Patsy, not quite. Let him come a little closer. When I give the word, help me push these barrels over. All right, now, Patsy. Nick. All right, we can come out now. Our friend's been knocked cold. We'll find him under a couple of crates. But who is it, Nick? Put your light on quickly. In a second. I'll be happy to illuminate the very unattractive face of your murderer. And there you are. Gee, Nick, that's... Yes, Mr. John Dre. <laughs> In just a moment, Nick will return to give you the final details of today's story and explain why John Dre killed the man who lived too long. The best way to keep up the appearance of the things you own is to protect them. And the finest protective finish you can find for dozens of household uses is Linex Clear Gloss, the modern brush-on finish for linoleum and wood surfaces. Here's the self-leveling gloss finish which flows on easily and dries to a lasting finish that protects for months Protects not only against wear, against dirt, against spotting, but actually protects against hot grease, boiling water, fruit acids, even alcohol. Yes, for any surface you want to save, it pays to use Linex Clear Gloss. And Linex Clear Gloss lends sparkling beauty as well, requiring only the whisk of a damp cloth to wipe away surface smudges. Give your floors and woodwork the gleaming luster, the sturdy protection of Linex Clear Gloss, the finest in household finishes. You'll find all three great Linex home brighteners. Linex clear gloss, Linex self-polishing wax, and Linex cream polish for fine furniture at hardware, paint, and department stores everywhere. And remember that your dealer is headquarters also for Chemtone, the miracle wall finish that goes on like magic. Its beautiful colors will lighten and brighten your home at an average cost of just $2.98 a room. Ask for Chemtone, which covers in one coat Dries in one hour.
And now let's hear from Nick Carter himself. Nick, where did Baker get that extra day? He didn't, Ken. That's the point of the whole case. Baker never spent any time at all in that lab. If he had worked there experimenting, his meter would have registered many hours of electricity. But as it was, the meter showed almost no electricity used at all. But Nick, the janitor said he was there. Which is why the janitor was killed. John Dre rented the lab in Baker's name. Then he killed the janitor to keep him from telling me that the man found dead in the lab, Baker, wasn't the man who said hello to him as he went in and out. But why was that necessary, Nick? Baker and Dre made the mistake of patenting their invention jointly. Now, the patent law is very strict on one point. It provides that only the actual inventor is permitted to take out the patent. If any other name appears on the patent, it's thereby automatically void. Oh, I see. So World Research could have broken the patent if they found out that Baker was not an inventor, but merely Dre's financial backer. Right, Patsy. And rather than take that chance, Dre tried to set up a false identity for Baker. He told Baker to go to the police with his story about being murdered, hoping that when the police checked up on him, they'd believe that Baker actually was a practicing scientist. Well, then why did he kill Baker after all? Dre was afraid someone might cross-examine Baker and get the truth. We killed Baker to keep the secret secure. Well, Nick, how about a little preview of next week's story? Well, next week, Ken, Patsy and I are called to the home of the foremost amateur art collector in the country to find out why one of his portraits has suddenly started squinting. Did you say squinting? He did. And he wouldn't have been able to break the case if he hadn't taken the fingerprints of a man who died 200 years ago. Fingerprints? 200 years old? And squinting portraits for the love of Pete, Nick. What do you call this case? I call it the case of the nearsighted picture. Friends, today is the second anniversary of the United States Cadet Nurse Corps. And today, America has urgent need of 60,000 cadet nurses. Every cadet nurse is a girl with a future. The United States Cadet Nurse Corps offers all expense scholarships, plus monthly allowances and uniforms to high school graduates under 35 who are in good health. And candidates joining 90 days prior to the war's end will be allowed to finish their training. Don't overlook this opportunity to serve. Inquire at your local hospital now. Join the United States Cadet Nurse Corps and do your part. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Lon Clark is starred as Nick with Helen Choate as Patsy. Original music is played by George Wright. Any resemblance in these programs to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. The entire production is under the direction of Jock McGregor. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented at this time and over these same stations each week by the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux self-polishing wax... Linex Cream Polish, and Linex Clear Gloss, created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme fine quality paints. This is Ken Powell speaking for the thousands of Linex dealers all over America and saying so long until next week. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.